Hi, welcome back to this video. Uh, here we are going to discuss uh, the spread, the plan, the strategy, the game plan, and how you should approach your CFA 2021 CBT based exam. Let's quickly recapitulate the topic areas. The ones highlighted in green are the ones which are maximum weighted, followed by the ones highlighted in yellow. Of course, as you will be knowing that now in the AM session and the PM session, the topic areas are completely divided, which means that whatever is going to be tested in the AM session are not going to be tested in the PM session and vice versa. Except for ethics, all other topic areas in both the AM and the PM session will be completely randomized. All that it means is that you would encounter question areas from one area from one particular subject area. For example, let's say you will face the first four questions from econs immediately followed by let's say two questions from FRA and then three questions from QT back to econ for another six questions Dito in PM session. Let's point on to the specifics all put together. There are about 19 study session and about 56 or uh, 56 or sorry, I think uh, yeah, 56 or 57 readings. And all put together, if you're following the CFA core curriculum book, there will be close to 3000 pages to be covered. Now these 3000 pages are the ones which are the solid study material which means that I am excluding the concept checkers that are there at the end of each chapter or reading as well as the summary notes. Interesting thing is that if you go through each of these readings on an average each reading is exhausted by almost 60 pages. As before you can prioritize the subjects which are highlighted but that is not to say that you should try to punt one subject or trade one subject in favor of another just because you're short on time do not do that a because fundamentally it is incorrect and b if you have a weak foundation and somehow you're able to pass through the level one you will be caught up in level two somewhere your weakness will be caught up there and you will fail miserably so my idea of preparation is that not only I should be thorough with my level one preparation and ensure and maximize my chance of passing, but it should also prove to be or it should build a very solid foundation for me so that I can build my L2 and going forward L3 as well. Because please understand that except for a few subject areas, for example, FRA and let's say corporate finance, Rest of all, FRA, Corporate Finance and Q2, QT, these three topic areas are limited up to level 2. And ap apart from them, all other topic areas are going to be there from your level 1 to level 3 journey. So if you have a weak foundation in any of the topic areas, just because they seem to be lesser weighted or they seem to be carrying lesser number of questions, I can guarantee you that you will be caught up in one level or the another. So don't punt, put in the hard work, put in the efforts. And I'm also aghast to see that some of the prep providers, some of the ad advisors also come forth and tell you that, you know, you, you may actually trade one subject in favor of the another just because you're, falls, you're falling short of time. Don't do it. Okay. Million dollar questions. How do I plan my schedule? Well, it depends upon three factors. First is what is your background? You might be coming from a science stream, stream or an engineering stream or you might be a commerce student or you might be simply a humanities student. Second is if you're already working somewhere, then what is your area of work? You might be from an asset management industry, you might be from a corporate finance, you might be from an equity research firm, you might be working in a rating agency. And binding these two is the interest, where your interest lies. So typically, it may so happen that if you're from, let's say, a science or an engineering background, you might pick up QT as the first subject area. If you're from commerce, FRA could be your choice. Basically, pick up any topic area which is going to ensure that your interest is 100% retained. Now, why this is important? 
I have seen many a candidates who have signed in for the program only to lose momentum in the first two weeks itself. And thereafter, it's a struggle altogether. It's a drudgery. And, you know, they just, some of them simply give up the program, regardless of the fact that they paid the fees. And some of them simply struggle through somehow to get over it. And if they don't, they simply fall through and they never take the exam. So don't do that. Uh, pick up the area which you are most comfortable with and let's start. Okay. Now that being said, is there any particular still, is there any particular um, uh, area or study sequence that I can suggest? Well, I may suggest, but please don't take this as a sacrosanct study, study, study sequence. Uh, it's nothing more than a pointer. So if I were you, the way I will be putting forth is that I'll be starting off with QT, followed by equity, followed by uh, corporate finance, or I may do FRA as well, one of these two, followed by fixed income, and then portfolio management, alternate investment, and ethics. Now, while I say so, please also understand that uh, there will be certain subject areas where uh, I would say that please spread those subject areas as much as possible, which, be, which is to say that I, treat, I want to treat these subject areas as floater subject areas. For example, ethics, for example, FRA. Now, why I want to treat them as uh, my floater subjects? Well, these are the subject areas which are going to take some time to assimilate. So it's not merely completing your first pass and then solving the questions and the concept checkers, but also you need to give that much amount of time uh, for this subject series to sink in in your system. Okay, now coming to the plan, how do I plan it? So, uh, to begin with, I'm not talking about the candidates who are taking their exam imminently. Uh, I'm typically talking about candidates who are from, let's say, May onwards till um, November. So whatever is applicable in the six months time period schedule, depending upon which window you are taking the exam, you may follow this schedule. So typically what I will do is, uh, so oops. So typically what I will do is that I will spread myself. That, that's better. So six months time is 24 weeks or let's say 25 weeks, 25, 26 weeks. So typically what I would do is the first 10 to 12 weeks, I will endeavor to completing my first pass. The next 8 to 10 weeks, I will dedicate to revising them. And the remaining four to five weeks time, I will take up the mocks, the topical tests, and brushing. Okay. So what do we mean by first pass? So this is the most challenging, the most daunting area. Because you will be starting afresh, you might have come back to study after five years of your college. You might be encountering subject areas which are completely alien to you, for example, portfolio management. So the first pass is the most difficult time period. And if you are dedicatedly through in this 12 weeks, believe me, your chances of passing the exam increases exponentially. I have never seen somebody who have actually completed the schedule that I have suggested and yet have failed. I have not come across anybody. So yes, you will have to toil here. You'll have to put in the best foot forward in this 12 weeks. You will come across study areas where you're completely, uh, you know, you're hitting against the wall, uh, you know, uh, and, and you're utterly confused. You want to throw up. But if you, if this, this is where you have to prod yourself. So what do we mean by first pass is obviously you'll have to get through the solid material of 3000 odd pages. You have to also complete the concept checkers, as I've said before, and the blue box example that's there in the CFI book. Now, one might think that why I'm not talking about the prep providers here. So as I said before that, you know, choosing prep provider is completely a, a personal thing. I, I have given you a pointer in my last video. You have to make your own choice. I really can't, you know, talk about that. But I can tell you one thing for sure. No prep provider is going to cover the material in 3000 odd pages. 
surprisingly one of the prep providers which i'm not going to name uh, it does the whole it covers the whole subject in within you know 800 to 900 odd pages definitely not my favorite definitely not my favorite because you can understand that when you try to compress or co compress in a, such a concise manner you would definitely be leaving out important topic areas and important topic concepts which i said before is going to eventually caught up with, with catch up with you in your level twos or level threes so uh this is the most important area of uh, as far as you know your efforts are concerned your revision how many revisions you should be doing well my suggestion would be that you should be aiming at completing at least four revision there is nothing called as over preparation the more number of revisions that you do more you will become comfortable more it the subject areas and the topic areas are going to be your second skin now anything less than three passes uh well you are actually asking for trouble and i would not suggest now one typical question that might actually come to your mind is that hey if you're talking about talking uh, taking the first pass it you know exhausting about 10 to 12 weeks 10 to 12 weeks how do i actually complete four passes in the remaining time well you know what happens is that your first pass is going to be the most difficult as i have already discussed but second pass onwards you will surprisingly see for yourself and notice for yourself that the number of weeks to complete that pass or the revision is coming down drastically so typically what happens is that if you have completed your first pass in the first 10 to 12 weeks or the three months time period the next pass or the first revision will take nothing more than five weeks the second revision you will see is taking three weeks and the third revision is taking perhaps two weeks okay so this is how it it actually boils down and one finding you will you will see that you know your your entire curriculum has just become your second skin so that's how i look at it okay mock till you drop drop is one of the favorite diet tribe in in the cfa community so i suggest that you know try your hands out with different mocks i will be also publishing mocks you can subscribe to my channel or you can uh, subscribe to my services wherein i'll be publishing the mocks the advanced level mocks but typically whichever provider you are taking or if you are taking the cfi mocks as well uh, try and see all put together that you are through with at least six mocks again the more the better the more the merrier anything less than four well again the same thing you are asking for trouble so this is the short study, study schedule that I wanted to present in front of you. And as before, uh, you know, the best material to study through is your core curriculum. Okay. So a little bit about the Prometric test button. Uh, this is a third party thing which I have come across and that is how my knowledge is. And I'm going to I take no responsibility of the accurateness, accuracy of this thing. So typically what has been told to me, what I have seen or what I have a feel for it is that suppose you have total 90 MCQs to solve. So when you open your first test in the AM session, the first 27 to 36 questions will be belonging necessarily from ethics. You will have no choice and all of the questions will be, you know, uh, you know there will be a button and once you click that button, the uh, question will open up with option A option b and option c as your answer you click the option and that becomes your and you press the submit button so your question is then submitted so uh that's how this 90 questions are sequenced and then thereafter of course there are certain buttons which are going to be provided at the bottom of uh, your uh, test panel if you click on this button then you will the another di dialog box will pop up which will say questions to flag questions that have been attempted and questions that are left unattempted okay along your questions along your test taking you will find that you will come across questions which you are not quite sure of at the first pass you can skip that question and how do you skip that questions well just don't skip the question for the heck of it what you should do is that there is a small flag button out here so you will just put the You'll just click on the flag button and the questions will be immediately flagged and stored in the uh, stored in the button for you and later you can revisit them so once you have done through the your entire 90 questions you can press the submit button or so you can press the finish button sorry there will be a finish button please remember that the finish button before you press the finish button the software is going to ask you 
have you, I re, you know, it's going to open up the unattempted question box at whether you'd like to revisit those unattempted questions or the flag questions. If you do not have any such things, then the finish is the last button. That means that you cannot come back to this test again. That is submitted. I hope this was a informative session for you. As I told before that I'll be coming out with the topical videos shortly. Stay tuned and stay subscribed. Thank you very much.